part of growing your website design business as a freelancer is having all the right tools or what I call your tech stack um, ready for you to use every day so that you can tackle all your tasks and most importantly make things a lot easier for you. So in this video I'm going to show you the five or the I think it's actually like seven tools that I use almost every day to run my entire freelance practice. So if you're interested stay tuned. What's going on guys? My name is Leopoldo Perilla and I am a freelance marketing designer and this year I thought about changing a little bit the way I do my YouTube videos and you see in the past or I would say last year I did a lot of more like tutorials and whatnot but this year I sort of want to bring you into behind the scenes of what I'm doing, the tools that I'm using, why I'm using them, the way we're doing project management, the way we are building websites and Webflow and whatnot. So in today's video, I wanted to start talking about the different, or I would say the seven most important tools that I use every single day. But before we dive into these tools that I'm going to show you, I just want to let you know that there are so many tools that you can be using. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I show you seven or 10 tools here that I use, always make sure that you are choosing the tools that work for you and for your clients and also for the type of projects that you're working with. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about a specific web de development tool, but that might not be the right one for you. So always make sure you are comfortable with the tools that you are using and they are the right tools for where you are in your business. And in the last 10 years as a freelance designer, I have realized that having these tools have sort of helped me to do a lot of things from project planning to making sure that we, I design my websites a lot faster to making sure that I develop and be able to go to market much faster for my clients and also to be able to track everything that I am doing from cost of my previous projects. So whenever someone asks you, hey, so how much do you charge for this type of websites or this number of pages and whatnot, it's something that you already know. You don't have to guess it anymore. And the more you track things, the more you track your time, the more you track um, the tasks that you are doing, you will see that your entire freelance practice becomes much easier. So let's go and let's start with the very first tool that I use every single morning as soon as I start my day, which is normally around nine o'clock in the morning. I head over to the office space here inside our apartment. I turn on my computer and I open this tool every single day. This is the first thing I do and that one is Notion. And Notion is an amazing tool to help you get your entire freelance practice organized. With Notion, you can build to-do lists, you can do project management um, pages within Notion to help you track what projects you're working on, um, the amount of hours that you're spending on projects, who still has to pay you and much more. And to be honest with you, last year, I actually spent some time developing my very own software where I was sort of putting everything together from projects, um, invoicing, even I even wanted to bring in proposals into my system and it was quite challenging and I, for me to be able to share something with the client I wanted to make sure that my clients had a great experience using it but then I started to build everything that I did on my software I sort of built it on Notion and what I realized is that I can actually share this with clients and so far they have loved it it's very easy for them to see what we're working on at the moment when we have next meetings and any content or anything that we're working on that has been created like any marketing material i can go ahead and put it on notion put a link to it and it will be very organized for the client to be able to access it whenever they need so if you want to get started using notion you can head over to the website i'm going to put the link below here and you will be able to create a free package um, and you will be able to access most of the everything that i do using notion the difference will be like if you need to add a lot more content then you will require a paid plan. But other than that, you can do everything with a free plan. And the next tool I have for you is called Slack. The reason why I like to use Slack is because I really do not like emails. I don't like to go to my Gmail and then have to search for an email that was probably sent a month ago, trying to figure out what it was that the client was saying. Then with just email, you're not able to connect tools directly to your email. So for example, if I'm using Figma to design a website and a client leaves a comment i will just get an email saying that hey this client left a comment or something like that but within slack i'm able to create 
an integration within this Slack channel that we're using to the Figma file. So whenever they leave a comment, it goes directly into that Slack channel that we are using for the project. So with Slack, you can start with a free package, but it's quite limited to the amount of messages you can send over your uh, month period, I believe. So I would recommend that you do sign up. If you are really going to be using Slack, just sign up for like a, a, month pack, a monthly package. Um, you don't need the biggest package that they have, but I would recommend that you pay for a whole year so you can save some money um, instead of paying month to month. And the way I use Slack is that as soon as a client signs up or um, signs a proposal for a website design project, a branding project, you name it, I go ahead and I create a private channel for my, within my Slack. And then within that private channel, I will add my clients to it and anyone else who is on their team. Now, once you create a private channel within your um, Slack channel, what it will do is that it will not allow your client to see any other channels within your main Slack channel. That way, everything is limited to just that channel. And the next thing that we have to do as website designers or brand designers or whatever type of design that you do, is that you're going to have to share files with your clients. You're, this is something that's going to happen a lot of the time. So let's say you are designing a new um, brand or a new logo for your client. Eventually, you have to send them all these files so that they can use it. So one of the things I do is that the moment a client starts working with me, I will go ahead and add them to um, a Google Drive share folder where they I'm going to sort of like um, organize everything into folders so they know where the logos are, they know where the website designs are, where the brand identities are. And this way they're able to get everything they need in case, you know, they need something and I'm not around. And I have also linked Google Drive to my Slack channel. So the same thing happens whenever someone leaves a comment or somebody drops in a new document or anything like that, I get a notification within Slack. By now I know you're saying probably like, Leo, let's talk about website design um, software. So where do you develop your websites and whatnot? So let's talk about Figma. And the reason why I love Figma so much is one, because it's um, free for most of it. Um, you can pay for it if you need to unlock certain features like more pages and whatnot. But it's a really easy software for you to get started with your website design, um, to be able to share with clients and let clients comment and you know, for whenever you're in a meeting with them, walk them through what you're doing on the design. And then your clients can also leave feedback whenever you need this for your website design projects. Now, most of Figma is completely free. Um, they do have a few features like adding new pages, um, which is something that most people I don't think they do, unless you're working on like big UI projects where you're gonna have a page for like your wireframes, a page for like all the different um, brand identity assets that you may need throughout your project, and then a page where you're going to be working on like a specific screen or screen types, and then different uh, pages for different screens. What I have seen the most is that people probably use about two pages, one for like all their um, brand identity stuff or mood boards and whatnot. And then they sort of built everything within a page. So they will just build different screens for different pages within one page. And then another tool that I do use every day, it will be Adobe XD. And this is just to do the exact same thing that I do in Figma. The only reason why I tend to use Adobe XD um, sometimes more over Figma is because I have the Adobe Creative Cloud. So if I'm doing something on Adobe Illustrator, it's very easy for me to move it to Adobe XD. And if I'm, let's say I'm designing something on um, Adobe XD that I need to edit like a photo, it's very easy to just right click and head over to um, Photoshop and in Photoshop get everything that I need to be done on this image. And then as I click save, it updates on Adobe XC. So that's quite a plus, but that's about it. And then for one of the biggest tools that I do use every single day, and I think it has made one of the biggest impacts in my freelance website design business is Webflow. And I'm not saying that WordPress sucks or this sort of uh, Wix is not good to use for your websites and whatnot. I think that first you have to see what is the project that you're working on. Um, and two, you also have to see what you're comfortable with because if you're very comfortable in building in WordPress, there's actually no reason for you to move into Webflow or to move to Wix or from Wix to Webflow. For me, the reason why I like Webflow, and this is something I have been testing for about two years now, um, since I stopped doing WordPress websites, is that I used to spend a lot of time trying to fix problems, updating websites, looking at websites to see why they randomly crash or why the next day everything looks so different or why 
um, things are not where I placed them before. And this used to happen a lot with different plugins and you know, trying to see which plugins are compatible with the themes that you are using or the new WordPress update that came out. And what I found out is that by removing all this, I'm actually able to concentrate on the designs that I'm working on a lot more. And then when I develop a website, I don't have to worry about things looking off or things crashing. I can actually concentrate on growing my, the websites that I am designing. And I don't know if you know this, but I mainly design for tech startups and being able to concentrate on growth and not on fixing problems is a key feature to have whenever you're working with one of them. And then this is a tool that I don't use every day, but I think it's very useful, especially once you're finishing your website design or your website development process. You want to make sure that you are doing a QA on your website. And what I mean by this is just a quality assurance to make sure that everything is functioning, to make sure that all the SEO tags or everything that you need for SEO is within your website, to make sure that your websites are looking great on desktop, as well as well as on mobile and for this i use something called use pastel and i think there's a free version to it and there's a paid version to it most of the time whenever i use this the clients already had an account so they just sort of add me to the um to their design or to their use pastel account and i'm able to see everything but within this platform we are able to leave comments we're able to see when someone fixed something we're able to look at the website um, from, head, from the header to the footer and able to see how everything functions. The only downfall that I think this has, and I can be wrong about this, so if I am wrong, please let me know in the comments. But what I found is that once you do like scroll inter scrolling interactions within Webflow and you put your website here, it sort of shows like a blank screen. And I think the reason for this is that um, UsePuzzle cannot like see what the JavaScript um, interaction is. So it just shows you a white screen of, or a white section for where that interaction is. With other type of interactions, I have not seen this problem, but I have mainly seen it when I'm doing like um, scroll interaction. The last tool that I have for you, and I think this one is really important, is that you need to start tracking your finances as a freelance designer. And I know a lot of us think like, oh, well, you know, I can leave that for the, for the end of the year or maybe later on I will do that, but I'll recommend that you start doing that right away. And for that, I'm using QuickBooks, or I think it's Intuit by QuickBooks. And here it's very easy for me to be able to access this on any uh, on my computer, or on my phone. And then at the end of the year, I can just give access to my accountant and she will be able to see all our spendings, all uh, money that came in and be able to help me do everything for my taxes. Now, one thing to keep in mind before I close this video is that these tools are not all for someone who is now starting with a freelance career as a website designer. I think if you're starting as a website designer today, I would recommend to do something as simple as possible that will work for you. For now getting started, what you need to concentrate on is getting clients, getting some cash flow, and getting some movement with projects. So don't worry too much about the tools, try to keep them simple. And most importantly, only use the tools that really work for you. If any of these tools have grabbed your attention, let me know in the comments below and I will try to do some walkthroughs on how I'm using some of these tools. I'm going to be creating a project management um, video on Notion, on how we have set up everything on Notion so that I can plan my weeks and I can also plan projects and also share this with clients. So that will be coming up next. So if you're interested, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button so the algorithm picks up this video and I will see you again in the next video.